Do I got your attention? I'm going to be reading to you, to begin here, from the authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we are going to be reading verses 10 on to verse 14. But God hath revealed them unto us by his capital S Spirit. The capital S Spirit is very significant because, significant because it is there to demonstrate and to show us that a capital S is a reference unto the Lord himself. Okay? For the capital S Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the lowercase s, spirit of man, which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the capital S, spirit of God. Atheists and lost people, devils, they can get a head knowledge of the Lord, and even a head knowledge of Scripture. But see, saints, saved people, we have the Word of God hidden in our hearts because the author of the authorized version, the Scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwells within us permanently. See? Okay? Verse 12. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world. And what is the Spirit of the world? The Spirit of this world? What is that Spirit today? That Spirit is that spirit of antichrist to be against but also to replace okay now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god lowercase s right there in that context is what the lord is imparting okay that we might know the things that are freely given to us of god which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, deconstructing, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, and the Lord is that Spirit, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The authorized version, little girl, is God's perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word. Okay? This is the real scriptures. Okay? Verse 14. But the natural man, unregenerate, not saved, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the capital S, Spirit of God. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Okay? Spiritually discerned. The fool has said in her heart that there is no God. But yet, what is very curious of that is every single atheist out there does believe in a God themselves. You read Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5, with the yea hath God said, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay? I do believe we are going to cover that today to refute you. Okay? Oh yes, we are. So, but that won't come until later. And see, Satan, who was fallen from heaven, you read about that in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15, uh, Hey, little stupid head, you, you don't use the scriptures, number one. You don't use the right book, okay? So if you were to read Isaiah uh, 14, uh, verses 12 on to verse 15 in your stupid little Bible there, uh, the word Lucifer probably wouldn't be there, but they would try to link it to tell you that Jesus Christ was fallen from heaven, okay? That's why you need to read the scriptures there, little girl. Okay? But the fool has said in her heart, there is no God. But yet, Satan's lie is that ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And Satan 
wanted to be, wants to be like the Most High. So when you are your own standard and you do not have a perfect standard on which to judge yourself and others, you are of your father the devil. Okay? You are of your father the devil. All right? Now very quickly, let's define some terms from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. And for you, dear saints, beloved saints, you're going to see mean Brad here today. Okay? Can't help it. I know with some of you, dear saints, that troubles you. So I am warning you ahead of time. This is going to be a harsh rebuke onto a idiot, stupid, lost little girl. <gasps> From Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Okay? From Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Uh, I just had it here. <laughs> okay. All right. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yes. Uh, I just had it. All right. Uh, idiocracy. Ah, here it is. Sorry about that. I had to find it. Idiot. Idiot. From Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Idiota. A natural fool, the fool says in his heart, there is no God, or fool from his birth, a human being in form, but destitute of reason, or the ordinary intellectual powers of man, a person who has understanding enough to measure a yard of cloth, number 20, number 20 correctly, Tell the days of the week, etc., is not an idiot in the eye of the law. Okay? But not having common sense. Definition number two. A foolish person, one unwise. Now, let's look at ignorant. Ignorant. There is ignorance and ignorant. We are going to look at ignorant. Ignorant. Destitute of knowledge. But yet knowledge is increasing. But yet people are becoming more and more ignorant of who God is. And little girl, you have no clue of who God is. You know nothing. Okay? You know absolutely nothing. And you need to be quiet, little girl. Okay, Christy, you need to shut up. All right? Because you are making a fool out of yourself every time you open that big mouth of yours, little girl. Okay? But let's continue here. Destitute of knowledge, uninstructed or uninformed, untaught, unenlightened, a man may be ignorant of the law or of any art or science. He may be ignorant of his own rights or of the rights of others. Unknown! Number two, unknown, undiscovered. A political use as ignorant concealment. Unknown, not knowing better. Okay? Three, unacquainted with. Ignorant of guilt. I fear not shame. Four, unskillful, made, unskillfully made or done. Here's another definition of ignorant. A person untaught or uninformed, unlettered, or unskilled, did I for this take pains to teach our zealous ignorance to preach? De ham. Okay? Now, let's look at stupid. Okay? Stupid. Beg your pardon. We are, I'm using OBS because we are going to go through a 20 minute video by this girl 
and we are going to refute this okay so I do apologize ahead of time to you Saints but see it's not this girl Christy that I hope to reach that we hope to reach excuse me but the one she is deceiving stupid very dull insensible senseless wanting and understanding heavy sluggish oh that men should be so stupid grown as to forsake the living God Christy Burke yes with wild surprise a moment stupid motionless he stood two dull heavy formed without skill or genius like your ridiculous arguments observe what loads of stupid rhymes oppress us in corrupted times and stupidity <laughs> stupidity extreme dullness of perception or understanding insensibility sluggishness so according to Webster's 1828 dictionary Christy Burke deconstructing stupidity now in the title of the video it's not going to be deconstructing stupidity in the title you're going to see deconstructing willful ignorance ignorance is not knowing better this Christy Burke doesn't want to know better because she has a big problem with God a very big problem and um, this video now that we are going to be looking at here is uh, I this this is horrible this is horrible um, this is <laughs> yeah talk about uh, attack of the zombie look at that wow well <laughs> yeah, you're gorgeous there, sweetheart. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Christy Burke. She says she's an ex-Christian. I'm not a Christian, by the way. I am a saint of the Church of God. And see, uh, an idiot like this would like, oh, you think you're, you, child, listen to me. Saints, I warned you. Child, I don't think you passed 30 years of age. I'm 49 years of age, so yes, I can legitimately call you that. You have no idea of what you're talking about, little girl. I have encountered several atheists who know more of the scriptures than you do. And on to atheists, which you purport to be, you would be a laughing stock. Okay? Now, Christy? It's obvious because, unfortunately, girl, I have given you quite a bit of my time uh, watching your videos and listening to your stupidity. There is no nice way to put this. Christy Burke, you want to be an atheist and an agnostic and, and do it? That, fine, fine, okay? But, see, you're attacking my father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're attacking my brother Paul. And you don't even know what it is you're speaking about. Okay? All right? Now, at one time, Christy, you might have been ignorant, not knowing better. Okay? But you've been through the Jesuit church buildings and whatnot, and you've, uh, you, I've heard your so-called testimony and uh, your introduction to Calvinism. Okay? So I could see where many things would mess you up. But see, here's the thing. The truth is there to be found. You don't want to know the truth, little girl. You don't want to know the truth. Hence, you are willfully ignorant. You're stupid. You're stupid. There's no nice way to put this to you, little girl. Okay? Now, now, do I have your attention, Christy Burke? I hope so. And you are vain enough, obviously, to where you will see this video. I hope you do. 
You want to contact me? I have emails. I don't do live streams. Okay? I don't do that. You want to contact me? I have emails. Go ahead. I'll talk with you. I will. But other than that, you need to keep your mouth shut. Because you have no idea of what you're speaking about, little girl. Okay? Alright? Like I said, I have seen your vanity. You may see this. And I, like I said, Christy, I don't seek to reach you. Because you are not ignorant. But rather, you are willfully ignorant. You don't want to know the truth. You're stupid. And dear, the saints, saved people, will see this and they're... You're, you saints, you're going to be doing a lot of... Oy vey. Are you really... But see, this is a symptom of Christianity. Okay? This is a symptom of that. So let us begin. Like I told you, brethren, we are going to go through this entire video. I will even put the link for this video in the description. Look at that face. Look at that face. The con man eyes going on now. Yeah. <laughs> but I will even put the link for you in the description box so you can see the very thing. Okay? But here we go. Now I will be pausing the video and uh, addressing things as we go along. Okay? So here we go. <laughs> Prepare to be astonished. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christy, and today I want to talk about Paul. The Paul, the Apostle Paul, the I had a vision on the road to Damascus, and now my life has changed, and I'm no longer persecuting and killing Christians, but now I am a mouthpiece for Jesus Christ. Now, if you've been following me on TikTok for a while, you probably already know I've got some beef with Paul. I'm not a big fan. Yes, of course, you have a beef with Paul, and hence you have a beef with God, which we will be addressing. And Christy, when we get to that part of the video, I am going to do my best to irritate you. I am. I am. Because I know what your problem is. It's quite obvious, you closeted feminazi. Okay? All right? But we, we will get to that a little later. And you sisters out there, um, this is not, this is not behavior. And you know what? On, on Christie's behalf, I will say this. This is why I'm not going to be as ruthless, sister. Yeah. That's why I'm not going to be as ruthless with this stupid little girl. She is not purporting, confessing at all to be saved or to be a saint of the Church of the Living God. Okay? So, I will give her that. I will give her that. But, let's continue. Man, okay? <laughs> I don't like the guy. I don't trust him. I don't like his writings. And I don't think that he was really aligned with what was written about Jesus. I think they were teaching completely different messages. And it is my opinion... Teaching different messages. <laughs> now, what we have already heard from dear Christy in the first 37 seconds. And Christy, I'm glad that you made yourself known right away instead of prolonging it. I will give you credit there. When credit is due, you got to give the credit. She, she, lets you off, she lets you know right up front. She is, she is not saved. She is not saved. Well, she might believe... Uh, no, no, she does not believe in the Jesus of the Scriptures. Psalm 50, reading from the authorized version, and that this, this is the true Word of God. The perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration Word of God. The authorized version. And Christy here would probably resort to the yay hath God said textual criticism arguments of the Jesuits not even, not even believing in anything but herself. Okay? So, this, 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 this is bad. But Psalm 50, Psalm 50, verses 16 on verse 21. 
verses 16 on to verse 21. But unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? See thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. This is exactly what this individual is doing. Number one, she does not use the scriptures. And number two, she's attacking even a Bible. Okay, not the scriptures because she's not using the scriptures. But nonetheless, she is attacking the word of God. Okay, Christy here hates God. She hates the word of God. And you are going to see this demonstrated. But let's continue. When thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. And thieves boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way. Hence, she is a partner with, when thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him. She is of her father the devil. She's climbing up some other way instead of going through the door. Okay? Thou givest thy mouth to evil. Oh, yeah. And thy tongue frameth deceit. And stupid, ignorant deceit at that. I have many enemies, uh, dear Christy. If you scroll down, you'll see. Basically, two. I got a lot more. But basically, the videos that you will see against me were made by primarily two. Mostly one. But, <laughs> okay. But th their arguments are far better than what you can come up with. Christy, you really need to be quiet. Okay, go ahead and do whatever you're going to do. This is America, Jack. You want to preach your satanic nonsense? Can't stop you. Go right ahead. Okay, but see, you're getting involved in something that you're clueless of. Okay? At one point, I don't blame you because of what you were brought in. But see, you have the same opportunity that every single saint has ever had. And yet you don't want them. Hence, you are willfully ignorant. You are stupid. You don't want to know. Okay. So let's continue. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Verse 21. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself, but I will reprove thee, and set them in order before thine eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you think you are your own little God, Christy. You are. You, you've put God on your level. Actually, you've put God here, and you have exalted yourself here, just like every atheist, okay? All right? And also now, Proverbs 13, just one verse. Proverbs 13, verse 13. Proverbs 13, 13. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. Oh, Christy doesn't only despise the word of God. She hates it. But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. And Galatians. <laughs> this comes up later. But we're going to read it now, and we will come back to it if needs be. Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 on to verse 12. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you, and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And what is the gospel for today? The death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the blood shed on the cross. And there are conditions on which the Lord has set for you to come to him that he may forgive you. You have to be broken of your self-righteousness, which this Christie never, ever was. There is no such thing as an ex-saint. Oh, there are a lot of ex-Christians, because remember, Catholics are Christians. I'm not a Christian, okay? I, I want nothing to do with Christianity, okay? But there is no such thing as an ex-saint. That, that does not happen. There are saints that get messed up. Yes, there is. 
Yes, there is. But there is no such thing as an ex-saint. Okay? But you got to be broken of your self-righteousness. You are not a good person. You are not God. You have to be, you have to take accountability for you and me. You putting Christ on the cross. Well, I didn't ask him. Well, that's tough. God so loved, past tense, Christy, past tense, that he gave, loved and gave. In John 3, 16, little girl, are all past tense. God does not present tense love the Christ-rejecting sinner. Christy, Christy, look at me. God does not love you. God's wrath is for you, okay? You hear that nonsense thing about how God loves you, and you are right to attack that. That is not the truth, okay? God loved. He gave, okay? All right? You, know, you, you don't know what you're talking about, Christy, okay? Well, let's continue. Oh, you have to have fear of the Lord. Because if you don't go to the Lord on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, contrite, taking responsibility, and having fear of him, and calling upon the name of the Lord, unless he saves you, you're going to hell. And Christy, you are going to hell. Okay? You are. You are. And you got a big smile about it, you poor creature, you. But I don't really pity you because you don't want to know the truth. So, up the dosage there, kid. Okay? Verse 9. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received. Let him be accursed. Yeah, because they're damning people to hell by teaching another gospel. Okay? For do I now persuade men, Christy, or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul is right there claiming divine inspiration that the Lord gave him this. Okay? Let's continue now with the video here. And we're going to see now the big problem, which is the basis for most all problems that you will run into with Christians, Christianity, and so on and so forth. Come on. And that if Christians spent more time comparing the words of Jesus and the words of Paul, I think that they might have a lot of questions for Paul. And they might even see him as one of the false prophets that Jesus warned against. And the reason I say this is because in Matthew 24, Jesus warned of false prophets. Jesus was talking about the destruction of the temple and the signs of the end times. It says uh, in verse one, Jesus left the temple and was walking away and his disciples came. Not using the authorized version of the scripture. Strike number one up to him to call his attention to its buildings he says do you see all these things truly i tell you not one stone here will be left on another everyone will be thrown down and his disciples say when will this happen what will be the sign of your coming at the end of the age so his disciples and okay that's enough she says the end of the age okay here's what you do not understand little girl here's what your problem is okay before we get to matthew chapter 24 saints you're like Oy vey, dude, I know. But see, Christianity doesn't know this. Christians are not being taught to what? Rightly divide the word of truth. And Christy, because you do not use the authorized version of the scriptures, if I were to tell you to go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, number one, you have a problem with God. Number two, you, you have a problem with what God wrote through Paul, so you wouldn't count it anyway. So you're kind of messed up there. But if I were to tell you in, to go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it would not read as it does in the scripture. 
2 Timothy chapter 2, verse, verse 15. And you know what? Let's add verse 16 as well. Study. Study. To shew thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. <laughs> Rightly dividing the word of truth. Verse 16. But shun profane and vain babblings. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. Christy. When did the New Testament begin? Do you know? How about we let the scriptures tell us? Okay? Go to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Rightly dividing the word of truth. This stupid idiota is not rightly dividing the word of truth. Not using the scriptures and not rightly dividing the word of truth. Of course, of course, you're going to see, and this is the whole thing, this idiot knows nothing about rightly dividing the word of truth. And Christy, if, if you truly want to know the truth, okay, you have to rightly divide, which uh, there will be an abundance of links in the description box where we go over rightly dividing the word of truth. There will be a plethora effect of links for you for information about this. You will, if you want not to be ignorant about this, Christy, the resources are there. But you don't want to know. But if you do, there they are. Okay? Hebrews chapter 9. There is a black and white yes or no answer to this question. When did the New Testament begin? Okay? Yeah, I, I am dumbfounded about how many of these Christians don't know this. Why? Because they don't rightly divide the word of truth. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 on verse 18. But Christ being come, and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal capitalist spirit offered himself without spot to God? He never sinned. He never sinned. Even though the flesh that Jesus Christ is come into was sinful. Yes, it was. All flesh is sinful. He never sinned and he kept the law perfectly. Hence, that sinful flesh was sanctified because even though it was sinful, he did not sin. Hence, sanctified the flesh. That's how that works. Okay? All right. How much more? Shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Verse 16. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Okay? Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. So when did the New Testament begin? With the death of the testator. Okay? That's when the New Testament began. It didn't begin with the birth of Jesus. 
It certainly didn't begin at the Council of Trent or Nicaea. God forbid! Okay, no. It's a cut, clear, dry answer. It began with the death of the testator. The death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ brought in the New Testament this current dispensation. Okay? Ephesians chapter 3. This, this is your problem, Christy. Number one, you're not saved. Number two, you don't want to be saved. Number three, you're not using the word of God. And number four, you ain't rightly dividing the word of truth. Kid, child, you're messed up out the gate. Okay? You, you, you're, you're messed up. You, 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 wow. Anyway, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on verse 7. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to your word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages or other dispensations, other ages, was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself. <laughs> How are they saved in the Garden of Eden? By grace through faith. Oh, you idiots. No. <laughs> See, here's, here it is, Christy. Salvation changes within the ages or dispensations, okay? If you want clarity on this, rightly dividing the word of truth, it's a long video, two videos, um, it's an investment. If you really want to know the answers to these things, you little idiot, there they are. If you don't, then you can go to hell, okay? Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Um, Ye brood of vipers, how can ye <laughs> escape the damnation of hell? There, I'm being more Christ-like for you, okay? I warned you saints, okay? But see, Christy, what this means is salvation changes in the dispensations, okay? One was not made right with God the same way they are made today. That ought to be obvious for anyone, okay? Okay? In the Garden of Eden, they saw God. God said, don't eat from that tree. Satan came along, your father, and said, yea, hath God said. And Eve, girl, was the one who was deceived. More on that later. Okay? But they disobeyed what God said. And because they did that, they got booted out of the garden. Now, anyone ought to be having enough sense to realize uh, they saw God. He said, don't do that. They did it and got kicked out. Don't do that. That's a work. Okay? That's a work. They saw God walking in the garden. You can read about that in Genesis chapter 3. Okay? How does a voice walk unless he has a body? They saw God. Okay? You don't need faith when you can see him. Okay? The kingdom of heaven, which is after the time of Jacob's trouble. Christy, you, you don't know anything of what I'm talking about. You don't. You want to know? that there, There's stuff for you. But I'm explaining this to you. Okay? All right? The kingdom of heaven is when the Lord comes back, the second coming, with us who go up at the redemption of the purchased possession, erroneously referred to as the pre-tribulation rapture. That's a whole different story, okay? We go up, the time of Jacob's trouble goes on for seven years. Jesus comes back with us who go up, and he establishes the kingdom of heaven for a thousand years. And during the kingdom of heaven, it is by works. Why? Because Jesus Christ, this is East, is going to be sitting on a throne in Jerusalem and you're going to be able to see the guy with your eyes. 
You don't need faith. They didn't need faith in the Garden of Eden. They saw God. Hence, hence, how one was made right with God differed then from under the law, which was faith and works, from today, which is by grace through faith. Okay? Within the ages, within the dispensations, Christi, salvation changes. Okay? This is a important, this is one of the most important things in order to understand Scripture, which you don't. Because you do not, number one, you're not saved. Number two, you do not rightly divide the word of truth. And this is a problem for the majority, I would say, 90% of Christianity do not rightly divide the word. 95%, okay? 95% do not rightly divide the word of truth. So, when Jesus Christ was walking on the earth before the death burial, we, we saw it in Hebrews, kid. That's when the New Testament began. That's when this dispensation began, the New Testament. Okay? All right? While Jesus Christ was on the earth as the Lamb, the law was still binding, which was by faith and works. And inconsequently, in this dispensation, when you come to the Lord on his terms, he seals you until the day of redemption, once saved, always saved. Okay? Once saved, always saved. All right? That is not there in any other dispensation. It appears in the book of Revelation during the time of Jacob's trouble for 144,000 Jews. But that's it. Okay? Hence, eternal security was not there under the law. Child, Christy, listen to me. You have no idea what you're talking about. Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble time of Jacob's trouble which proceeds after this dispensation after we the body of Christ get caught up it's going to be reverting back to faith and works there is no eternal security there for the hundred but except for the hundred and forty four thousand Jews okay all right and that is what Matthew chapter 24 is about you have no idea what you're talking about Christy you need to be quiet let's continue here in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 6 that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Okay? So right here in Ephesians chapter 3, Paul says it was not made, it was, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. They were not looking forward to the cross in the Garden of Eden during the patriarchal period under the law. Okay, they weren't. It wasn't revealed until this. Okay? Christy, kid, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. And she's going to, and, and see, if you don't rightly divide the word of truth, the scriptures tell us, we just looked at three of them, tell us to rightly divide the word of truth. The whole scripture is written for me, but it's not all written to me. Christy, the reason why what Christ was preaching while he was on the earth and what Paul preached seem to butt heads is because they are two different dispensations. Okay? Okay? You have no idea what you're talking about. You're, you're clueless, Christy. You are absolutely clueless. Yeah, and what's worse is you don't want to know. Okay? But let, let's continue here. People want to know what to look for. What signs should we be on the lookout for for the end times? And, you know, Jesus answers. And he says, first of all, before anything else, he says, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and many will and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. And then he goes on to talk about, you know, all of the signs. But he starts out with a very important statement. Watch out. Nobody deceives you. People. That's true. You're not using the scriptures. Okay, look, look at them. Look at them dead eyes. 
Look at them dead eyes. Very compromising position there, young lady. But here's what you're not touching because you have no clue, you stupid idiot. All right? Let's see. Let's now from verse 3 on to verse 7. Okay? We are seeing bits of that. Why? Because it says in verse nine, uh, verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Okay? Verse 9, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Here's what you're not mentioning. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Today, when you come to the Lord on his terms and he saves you, you are eternally secure, once saved, always saved. You do not have to endure to the end of anything to, make, to know that you're going to heaven because you are sealed. You are once saved, always saved. You are going to heaven, no ifs, ands, or buts. Okay? You are eternally secure. Today, in this dispensation, you do not have to endure to the end. But during the time of Jacob's trouble, which is after this dispensation, which is faith and works, they are going to have to endure to the end to be saved. Christy, and all you people being deceived by this idiot. Matthew chapter 24 is describing the time of Jacob's trouble. Doctrinally, it is not for us at all today. You have to rightly divide the word of truth or you end up like this. It's simple. It's simple, okay? And, and another thing, kid, verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came on to him privately, saying, Tell us, tell us. Jesus was sent, uh, we're, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Jesus was sent unto none but who? The Jews, the Hebrews, Israel, okay? Tell us, the Jews, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world okay <laughs> all right and verse 4 and Jesus answered and said unto them take heed that no man deceive you you Jews Hebrews okay Jews and Hebrews the false Christs and the false prophets that he is talking about there are going to be a plethora of them during the time of Jacob's trouble, all pointing to that man of sin, the, the son of perdition. Today, yes, there are many antichrists out there today. Yes, there are. You're one of them, Christy. You are one of them. It is not Paul, okay? It is not Paul, all right? This will be in its fulfillment during the time of Jacob's trouble. Why is that? Because the body of Christ is not on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Okay? All right? Show that to you. Absolutely. In the Pauline epistles, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 on to verse 4. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Falling away. Those who claim to be of us but were made manifest that they were not of us are being are being shooed that they're not of us. That's the falling away. Save people fall. Okay? Save people fall. Lost people. Infiltrators. People who never were. Only in appearance. They fall away. Okay? Verse 4. And the son of perdition. That man of sin erroneously referred to as the Antichrist, which does not appear in Scripture. Okay? Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, 
or that is worship. So that he, as God, sitting sitteth in the temple, the third rebuilt temple in Jerusalem, of God, showing himself that he is God. Okay? And look at this. Verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The he is what? The body of Christ. God is omnipresent. Jesus Christ, you old fart, is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. Okay? He's not going anywhere. His body, the body of Christ, a safe people. We get caught up and then that man of sin, son of perdition, be revealed. Okay? Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Doctrinally, it is not for us today, Christy. You have to rightly divide the word of truth, which you do not. Hence, you are making yourself look very, very stupid. Okay? Let's continue now are going to come they're going to trick you they're going to deceive you and they're going to lead people astray so be on the lookout for those people and then in verse 11 after he kind of discusses you know some of the things that they'll experience like earthquakes and violence and war in verse 11 he says again many false prophets will appear and deceive many people and then again in verse 23 he reiterates it he says at that time if anyone says to you look here is the messiah there he is do not believe it for false messiah christy this is talking about the time of jacob's trouble <laughs> okay this has nothing to do with us today he is describing matthew chapter 23 is describing the spiritual climate before the redemption of the purchased possession Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. The body of Christ, the saints are not on the earth. That's why they are going to be in abundance because the body of Christ is not letting, hindering these things from happening. Christy, you, you, ought, to be in, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to be embarrassed. You really ought to be. You, you, you know nothing of what you speak, little girl. Okay. Is and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. This is loaded because if you think about Paul and who Paul was, he came on scene very early and he was persecuting these followers of the way as it was called in the beginning it was not christianity it was the way and he was persecuting these people right and then he had a a, a a vision he had an experience where jesus uh, you know came to him and basically changed his life and told him to turn from those ways and 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 decided to make him a mouthpiece for mm -hmm. Jesus. That's what Paul is claiming. Mm -hmm. But if you listen to Jesus, he's saying, hey, be, be careful. People are going to come through and they're going to claim to be me or, you know, claim to speak for me. And Instruction and righteousness, yes. But Paul saw the Lord. Paul's doctrine, the doctrine that saves today, was revealed unto Paul. This is doctrinally for another dispensation. Instruction and righteousness, yes. Yes, you have no idea, Christy, what that means. Any questions? Like I said, there's going to be a lot of links for you all in the description box. Okay? Um, he's not talking about Paul. He's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. It's for another dispensation. This is what happens when you don't rightly divide the word of truth. Let's continue. And they're going to deceive a lot of people. I would consider Paul to be someone who deceived a lot of people. Of course you would. If the true message, then a lot of people were deceived by Paul. Because Paul, he was responsible for kind of the spread. And dear saints, if you can't already figure out what this <clears throat> girl's big problem with Paul is, we'll see it a little later. Ultimately, her problem is with God. But anyway, let's continue. Of Christianity. And I think it's interesting that Jesus says that false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive. 
Yeah, the Book Hulk of Revelation cast out talks demons. It. He performed miracles. He he performed several miracles according to the text, according to the New Testament. And so he's checking the boxes, right? Like he comes on scene. But see, the Lord was the one who gave that ability on the Paul during the time of Jacob's trouble. Those are lying signs and wonders that is empowered by the devil, your father, okay? This, this girl knows absolutely nothing. Christy, you know nothing. I, I actually feel embarrassed for you a little bit. I really do. You're just, oh, let's continue. He, in Galatians 2.20, which was my favorite, favorite Bible verse in my teenage years, I had it painted above my bed. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but... Okay, and let's, let's, let's go here for little Spunky Britch's uh, benefit. I am crucified. Now, you're going to love what she says here. You're going to love this. And we'll, we'll talk about where she gets this from, but you're going to love what she says next. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me, past tense, and gave, past tense, himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Okay? But Christ lives in me. So he is making a statement about how he has essentially died. And Jesus took over. And now the one that's living through him is Jesus. So he's essentially propping himself up to be on the same level of Jesus. And it's so funny how... so. <laughs> you, you heard that. Yeah. So she's saying that we call ourselves little Christs. Christy? There is, uh, in the description, Christy, if you make it this far, you probably won't. But if you do, Please watch Roman, the video on Romans chapter 7. Okay? All right? Please watch that video where we talk about this. But uh, let's, let's go back just a touch. Okay? Let's hear that uh, brilliant statement again. Scene. He, in Galatians 2.20, which was my favorite, favorite Bible verse in my teenage years, I had it painted above my bed. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So he is making a statement about it's how the scripture. he has essentially died and Jesus took over and now the one that's living through him is Jesus. So he's essentially propping himself up to be on the same level of Jesus. And it's so funny how so many Christians see this as um, kind of an act of humility when you die to yourself and let Jesus live through you. I think mm -hmm. that what they're doing is they're actually putting themselves on the level of Jesus and they're claiming that this isn't me, this is Jesus. Who I am now, who you perceive when you talk to me and interact with me is Jesus. It's not me, it's Jesus. <laughs> like. That's exactly what pastors are doing. That's what people are doing when they say, like, I've died to myself and Jesus lives in me. No, it isn't, you stupid little child. No, it is not. You have no clue of these things. You have no idea what you're talking about. Again, again, I encourage you, any of you who see this, questions about what she is saying there? We, uh, watch the video on Romans 7, but... In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, <laughs> this, is, this is amazing, uh, it really is. Verses 8 on to verse 11, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 8 on to verse 11. Here's Paul talking of himself. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that I'm not me to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. She was right when she said it was called the way. You were right. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. And what are we reading to? We are reading on to verse 11. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preached, and so ye believed. 
Paul accounted himself as nothing. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And see, a saint, a saved person, knows we are nothing. Okay? All right? We do not prop ourselves up as little Christs. There, there will be a video in the description box for you to consider to watch if you are so inclined to do so. Will we address that? But see, a, a, a where she could be getting this from is the Kenneth Copelands, the um, Joel Osteen with his blasphemous book, The Power of I Am. Okay, Kenneth Copeland said, well, I am too. They believe and teach and preach that they are little gods. So with that kind of nonsense from them stupid, wicked, vile charismatics, which on the channel you can see got lots of stuff refuting them, okay, those people, yes, they claim that they are on the level with Christ. They're not saved. They're not of the church of the living God, Christy. See, you're comparing satanic things with things that really are. And in doing so, you're making yourself look very stupid, Luca. Okay? You really are. All right? But 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses, uh, 2 Corinthians 12, verses 7 on verse 10. Okay? Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations... And yes, Paul had a pride problem. Again, Romans chapter 7, okay? There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Okay? And every saint has some kind of thing to keep us humble. I have a heart problem, okay? Several brethren have many health issues, okay? We have things that the Lord will allow in order to keep us humble, okay? We don't at all think we are little Christs. The charismatics that you are referencing, yes, they do. They're lost. Okay? They're lost. Yes. Pope Francis. Uh, Sosa. The, you know, the Pope of Catholicism. They consider themselves to be gods. Yes, they do. But so do you, Christy. See, and Christy, you are putting yourself even above God. So, child, you need to shut up. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Why? that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in weakness, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. How is Paul made strong? How is he made strong? Beg your pardon, brethren. How is he made strong? By Christ who dwells within him. Okay? All right? It's not us. And also, 1 Timothy chapter 1, my, one of my favorite verses in Scripture. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. This is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Saved people do not think we are walking around as little Christs. Charismatics do, some Catholics do, some even some King James Babylonian Christians think they do. Yes, but safe people, no. We, you, you, Christy, you're clueless. You need to stop. Go ahead and do what you do about your atheism and shame atheists themselves. But uh, you, you know nothing. You know absolutely nothing. And see, I've seen enough of you. You don't want to know. You're willfully ignorant. Hence, you're stupid. Okay? So let's continue with her little diatribe. Come on. You're basically calling yourself Christ. You, you really are. No. So 
We Again, idiot. Paul is kind of propping himself up as, as Jesus. He's performing signs and wonders. It even says <laughs> that he will lead astray as many as possible, even the elect. Now, I think the elect, according to Jesus, was the Jews. Because yes! He was a Jew. Yes! He was performing his own kind of... In that context? Uh, he fall- yes, in that context, you're right. Yes, because he was speaking to the Jews... For the time of Jacob's trouble, Jacob is Israel, okay? You're right there. Bravo! You're wrong about everything else, but bravo! Good girl, good girl. Uh. Oh, the Jewish religion, and that's that's what he was there to minister. He wasn't there to minister to the Jews according to his own words, but then Paul comes along and he starts ministering to the Gentiles. And a lot of the people, a lot of the Jewish people that were a part of this movement didn't like that. They didn't want the Gentiles to be welcomed in. And you see a lot of people leaving in the earliest days. That's why you have texts about, you know, oh, if they went out from us, they were never a part of us in the beginning. Because (laughs) people... Again, 1 John chapter 2, we've already referenced it. This is describing the falling away. Okay? Uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 on verse 20. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many, <laughs> right here, Christy Burke, many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Christy, you were never saved in the first place. Yes, you are an ex-Christian, but there is no such thing as an ex-saint. You were never saved in the first place. Never! Never! You were never saved. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. And of course, that unction... From the Holy One is a reference unto the seal until the day of redemption, God within you, the hope of glory. Okay? Dear child. Okay, let's continue. People were leaving the faith in the very beginning. And so it's interesting that if, uh, you know, the elect were the Jews, according to Jesus, and he's saying that the elect will be led astray and leaving in the beginning because they were inviting all these other people in, well, then a check. You have another box checked. And so if you consider that, you consider that Paul is checking the boxes of false prophets and Jesus was so eager to warn against these false prophets. Let's... Again, Matthew chapter 24 is written for another dispensation. He's describing the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? While Christ was on the earth, he was offering the physical, literal kingdom of heaven onto the Jewish people. Okay? In In the description box... About the Sermon on the Mount, okay, Christy, you need to watch the, that video, please, okay? When Christ was on the earth, the law was binding. He was offering the actual physical kingdom of heaven, which is only found in the book of Matthew, and every time there's a reference onto an actual physical, literal kingdom with Christ as king, he was offering the kingdom of heaven onto the Jews. It was under the law. He was offering them the kingdom of heaven. Another dispensation. The death, burial, and resurrection happened. The death of the testator. This dispensation that we are now in today. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Simple. Simple. It's so simple. But this idiot doesn't want to know. I've seen enough of her stuff. She does not want to know the truth. People. So, let's continue. Just pretend for a minute. We'll work within the hypothetical framework that Jesus was God, that Jesus was who we, you know. Hypothetical framework, okay? See, she doesn't believe that in the Lord anyway. She's not saved, okay? All right. So, this is... Uh. No claim to be or who the, the church claims him to be, that he was actually making a prophecy, and he was prophesying that there would be these false prophets... Well, Paul checks that box, every box, and then some, because not only is he checking those boxes, performing uh, signs and wonders, casting out demons, deceiving people, driving away the elect, not only is he doing all of that, but he's also teaching a completely different message than Jesus taught. 
He's adding to the message a lot, even. And sure. <laughs> It's not funny. <laughs> uh, yes! Because the death, burial, and resurrection, he fulfilled the law in dying for sin. Okay? Another dispensation! Oy vey! Oy vey! Oy vey! Oy vey! Okay. Sure, if you believe that Jesus spoke to Paul and is speaking through Paul then, you know, you can say that it is the message of Jesus. But See, if you don't rightly divide the word of truth, then yes, you're going to see a contradiction and you're going to end up like this. Okay? You are commanded in Scripture to rightly divide the word of truth. We looked at three occurrences in Scripture where we are to do that. Okay? All right? Man. But... Anybody can say that Jesus is speaking through them. Pastors do it all the time. Just because Paul claims that he had a vision of Jesus doesn't mean that he actually did. And he covered uh, Paul himself covers that in First and Second Corinthians, little girl. You know, people will argue that he ch his life changed and all that. I think that there could have been a lot of motives for why Paul did what he did. But I'll save that for another video. Maybe I'll do a whole video on why. And see right there, she touched on there can be another uh, many reasons why someone can change their life. That I agree with, okay? You know, going around talking about a changed life. No, you are a new creature. Why are you a new creature? Because the Lord lives in you. Hence, you are a new creature, okay? She's right. A lot of people can do a lot of things to change. Uh, uh, guys can go to AA, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, and uh, have their higher power be a doorknob or whatever. But they can change, have a changed life, yes. But see, when you come to the Lord on his terms and he saves you, he seals you, you are a new creature. Something you know absolutely nothing about, Christy. I think Paul is not trustworthy and kind of deep dive into Paul because it is a fascinating... Your big problem is about what Paul said about women. What the Lord said about women. Okay? Through Paul and the position as far as what she is doing. That's her problem. She's a closet feminazi. Okay? Just to let that... You kind of... Uh, you saints, I'm sure you already figured that one out. Okay? But let's continue. The subject, he is a very mysterious character of the Bible to me. Um, and of course, because you're lost. But what I want to do now is I want to look over the contradictions between his teachings and Jesus. There let's are go. a lot of contradictions between their teachings, but there are also a lot of contradictions between their own teachings. Right? So Paul contradicts... Because of the different dispensations. Okay, you're watching this video. Keep that in mind. Different dispensation. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Salvation changes within the dispensation. Okay? Keep that in mind. That's why what Paul says seems to contradict with what the Lord said. Because, number one, the law was binding. And number two, while he was on the earth, he was offering the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is all works because Christ is going to be on the throne and you're going to be able to see him. Okay? All right? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Keep that in mind as we go through these ridiculous things that this idiot, this stupid head, brings up. Okay? Contradicts himself. We see Jesus contradicting himself when he says to love others and to just love people, but then he says you have to hate your whole family to follow him. So that, we're seeing a lot of. No! What he meant by Jesus has to be number one! Okay, that's what that means. He's not saying to go up to your father or your mother and say, I hate you. No. But Jesus has to come before your mother or father. Just like with the thing where if your, your hand offended, cut it off. Or your eye offended, pluck it out. He's not talking to you about literally going, ah, or slap it off or cut it off. No. He's talking about don't look at things you shouldn't look at. Don't, you know, don't put your hands where they shouldn't be. Don't walk to places that you shouldn't go. That's what he's talking about, you idiot. Oh. And, 
and see, brethren, this, okay, this is the result of Christianity. Okay? This is the result of Christianity. God loves you, huh? Uh. Discrepancies between their own teachings. So it's kind of, it's hard to say that they contradict one another when they also contradict themselves. But I do want to kind of look at some of the teachings of Jesus, some of the teachings of Paul, and let's, let's put them together and let's see if they could even be compatible with one another. Starting in Matthew 23, 8 through 10, Jesus says, you are not to be called rabbi, for you have this one is, teacher. This one, this one is great. I gotta tell you, this, this, just, okay, just, you're gonna love this one, yeah. You saints are gonna be like, are you serious? Are you, and you were all brothers. Do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father and he is in heaven, nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. So I think it's pretty clear that Jesus is telling his disciples. Wait, 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 wait. Have you noticed she says, I think I, 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 me, me, me. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, like her father, the devil. Huh? Okay. She reminds me a lot of Mark the Messenger. They are not teachers. They are not instructors. They are not to prop themselves up to be in that position of authority over other people, teaching them things. Uh, to me, that's pretty clear here. But First Timothy. Wait, 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 wait. Let's hear this again. Through 10, Jesus says, you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all brothers. Do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. So I think it's pretty clear that Jesus is telling his disciples that they are not teachers. They are not instructors. They are not to prop themselves up to be in that position of authority over other people, teaching them things. Uh, to me, that's pretty clear here. But first... You can't make that kind of stuff up, man. So she goes on. She, you're going to say this, that Jesus said that people are not supposed to be teachers. God the Father, Jesus Christ, was walking on the earth, presenting the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse 12. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. So right there he was saying, because why? The law and the scriptures were given unto the Jews, but yet what they were teaching was accurate, but yet they were not um, practicing what they preached, so to say. Okay? See, this is why you need to read context, kid. Okay? For they bind heavy burdens and, and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do, for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments, and love in the uppermost, and love the uppermost rooms at feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets to be called of men. Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all of ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon earth, a religious title, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters. Not teachers, you idiot. See, you're not using the right book. So, of course. Be not, okay. And neither be ye called masters. For one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. And James mentions this. James, which is also written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Prove that to you. Okay, James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes, which are scattered abroad, greeting. Okay? But in James 
chapter 3, verses 1 and verse 5. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Amen. Amen. Why? Because I'm going to have to give an account for everything I've taught. <laughs> Christy, at the great white throne, you're going to give an account for what you taught. And see, you're too stupid to have that horrify you. Because you are your own God. You are of your father the devil. You pathetic creature, you. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, with though, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Being many masters, why? Because we will receive the greater condemnation. I am going to have to give an account for everything I taught. Anyone who is called to this position is going to give an account. We're all going to give an account of ourselves to God. Save people at the judgment seat. You, Christy, at the great white throne. And good luck. Okay? Good luck. But I'm going to give an account for what I taught. Okay? That's what he's talking about. So don't be a master. Okay? He's not saying not to that we aren't teachers or anything like that. Okay? Um, and also, Mark chapter 3, verses 14 on verse 19. See, she doesn't want to have anyone telling her the truth of God. Because she is her own God. Okay? That's obvious. But, okay, Mark chapter 3, verses 14 on verse 19. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that they might send them forth to preach. Now, preach and teach are two different things, but the one incorporates the other. Yes, things that are different are not the same, but one who preaches also teaches. One who teaches also preaches. They are two different things, but they are complementary to one another. Okay, you have to remember that. Yes, things that are different are not the same. Teaching and preaching are two different things. Yes, but one who preaches also teaches. One who teaches also preaches. Okay, it's kind of like peas and carrots. Okay, let's continue. All right. Uh, and to have power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. And Shimon, he surnamed Peter, and James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, and he surnamed them Benozjaris, which is the sons of thunder. And Andrew, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Shimon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him. And they went into a house. Okay? And also, Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, okay, but Matthew chapter 5 here, where, where is that? Verses 17 on to verse 20, that is. Matthew chapter 5, verses 17. Oh, I'm, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's continue. First Timothy 2.7, Paul says, For this purpose I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. There's one what simple is, hearing hack anyone can use to get this? rid of tinnitus in less than says a person who is not lying and a true and faithful teacher of the Gentiles. So right there, he's calling himself a teacher. He very much considers him a, himself a teacher, that he spends his letters teaching people how to be Christian. And so it's so interesting to me that Jesus is very specifically says, you are not a teacher. You are not an instructor. You were to be a humble servant. <laughs> that is your ministry. And then Paul comes on scene immediately and he starts teaching. He starts. Okay. Okay. Okay, the Matthew chapter 5 thing we'll touch on, but, okay, let's go to the obvious. She says that Jesus said for no one to be a teacher, right? Now, see, she doesn't use the scriptures. 
So this is not what it says in her little stupid Bible, but someone who reads the scriptures. Christy. From the authorized version of the scriptures, Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 on to verse 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. The scriptures does not say and make disciples. It says teach, you idiot. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Oh, Christy, you. <laughs> Look at that face. Christy, you need to, the Lord rebuke you. You need to shut up. You, the Lord says right there, to go teach. Okay? And, and as far as far as Paul, as far as Paul, the Lord ordained people to go and teach. Okay, Christy, Christy, I I I I I, I don't really want to believe you're this stupid, but I think you are. First Timothy chapter two verses five on verse seven. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. And she made that, oh yeah, he's lying. Shut up, you little idiot. Okay? A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore... Oh wait, what are we reading to on verse 7? We'll stop at verse 7. But Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Okay, Acts chapter 9. Okay, Acts chapter 9, 1 verse, verse 15. Okay, about Paul. Okay, but the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, he, the Lord's talking about Paul, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Verse 16, for I will shew him how... For I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. See, what happened is Judas Iscariot fell by transgression. And Paul was the replacement for Judas Iscariot. Okay? The Lord chose Paul to go and preach and to teach. Okay? The Lord, we just saw in Matthew 28 from the scriptures, Christy, <laughs> the Lord did say for people to go and teach. Okay, let's continue. Okay. Building churches and teaching them on how to be and giving them rules for how to live. Jesus didn't say to do that. And he didn't say, hey, I'm going to send someone after my death to come Just, along and be your teacher. He didn't say that. He, he didn't prophesy Paul at all. <laughs> Christy, you're an idiot. You're stupid. I'm sorry. There's no nice way to put that to you. Okay? That Bible you got that says go and make disciples. The perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God. Jesus told people to be teachers. You're an idiot. You're stupid, Christy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay? That, that is just so stupid. I'm sorry. Let's well, continue. I would be more convinced that Paul was who he said he was if Jesus had prophesied that Paul was going to come on scene, but he never did. Jesus never said anything about Paul or even implied that there would be a Paul to come on scene after he was gone to continue his teachings. You'd think Jesus would have clarified that. Uh, Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 on to verse 20 from the authorized version. God's perfect and Aaron given by inspiration, word of God. Uh, 
Our Come second on. contradiction comes in Matthew 7, starting in verse 21. Jesus. Okay, hold on. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. <laughs> Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Okay. Because not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only. Kingdom of heaven. Every time you see the kingdom of heaven referenced in the authorized version, in, Ma in the book of Matthew, of course. It's only in the book of Matthew. It's always a reference onto the kingdom of heaven, the actual physical, literal kingdom that he will establish at his second coming and that he was offering at that time. You have to rightly divide the word of truth, little child. Okay, you're really getting on my nerves. And I had to watch this three times. Ugh. Only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, in your name drive out demons, in your name perform many miracles? And I will tell them, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. So he has said, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Now, enter into the kingdom of heaven. you got to remember, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. Eternal security is not there except for the 144,000 Jews. During the kingdom of heaven, okay, the time of Jacob's trouble, excuse me, is faith and works. Excuse me. The time of Jacob's trouble is faith and works. Eternal security is not there except for the 144,000 Jews, okay? The kingdom of heaven, it's all works, okay? The Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. So a lot of people are going to be saying that in the kingdom of heaven. It's like, I never knew you. Our instruction in righteousness today, yes, a lot of people say they are. But in heart and in works, they deny him. Okay? That's instruction in righteousness for us today. But doctrinally, it is for the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Now watch what this little idiot does here. It's pretty clear. But Paul says in Romans 10, verse 13, which he is, he's uh, quoting... Joel 2.32. But he says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. He it's a different dispensation, child. Okay? It's after the death, burial, and resurrection. And you know what? Let's read what you're not reading. Okay? In Romans chapter 10. Okay? Romans chapter 10. Oh, verses 8 on verse 13. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart. That is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Again, Rightly, the death, burial, and resurrection happened. It is finished. The blood shed on the cross. Okay? What he was saying in Matthew there, in Matthew chapter 7, is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven, you idiot. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Simple. Okay? He's speaking for another dispensation. He's giving doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. Okay? All right? Instruction and righteousness for us today? Yes. Doctrine? No. Okay? Uh, uh, let's continue. He's basically saying, like, no matter who you are, if you call on God, you will be saved. But if you look in Matthew 7, Jesus says, not everyone who calls on my name will be saved. So we see conflicting reports here. Our third contradiction comes in Romans 9. It's not conflicting reports. It's rightly dividing, you stupid twit. And where Paul says, therefore, God has mercy on whom he wants Aye. to have mercy, and he hardens whom he wants to harden. To me, this is a, a very clear indication that the Calvinists got it right. Although Ah, Calvinists. Uh, in her one thing, in her testimony, if you will, she mentions how the Calvinists messed her up. But... Okay, and Matthew chapter 9, verses 17 on to verse 24. The Calvinists like this, okay? They do, and they try to use this for their elect and non-elect garbage, 
okay? And the reference that she is going to reference is about Pharaoh, okay? And see, this, what the Calvinist does will say to this and come to this to say that someone doesn't have freedom to choose, okay? Romans 9, verse 17 on, verse 24. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee, and that my name might be declared to all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? She is. Any of you who say you are your own God, and do not submit unto the truth of Scripture? Okay? All right? Nay, but, O oh man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Right here, verse 22. What if God, willing to shew his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted, fitted, to destruction. Fitted. They put themselves there. They have chosen. Not that God chose for them. Okay? Again, about Calvinism, in the description box, there will be a link where we go over Calvinism, refuting the ridiculous claims of Calvinism. Okay? And he might make known, verse 30, 23, the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, saved people, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. And see, as in the two short videos, if God ordained someone to go to hell without a chance at all, then he would be cruel, wouldn't he? But see, the thing about Pharaoh is, and here you've got to remember, go to Exodus chapter 9. Christy, if you've made it this far, I commend you, you little idiot. But seriously, if you've made it this far, Christy, go to Exodus chapter 9. Go to Exodus chapter 9, verses 13 on to verse 17. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that he may serve me. Okay, his scales are his pride. Pharaoh, a king, okay, uh, Pharaoh. There, uh, a link for that will be in the description box, okay? <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Moses, let's read that again, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart, and upon thy servants, and upon my people, and upon thy people, excuse me, that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. For now I will stretch out my hand, that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence, and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. And in very deed, for this cause have I raised thee up, for to shew in thee my power, and that my name might be declared, in, declared throughout all the earth. And what are we reading to on verse 17? As yet exaltest thou thyself against my people, that thou wilt not let them go. <coughs> Pharaoh from the start had a hard heart. Pharaoh, you got to remember, the Pharaohs were thought to be gods. The Pharaoh himself thought himself God. He already had a heart contrary to God. Okay? Hence, he had already made his choice. You got to remember that about Pharaoh. Pharaoh was, the Pharaohs were worshipped as gods. And Pharaoh himself thought, Christy, he was his own God. Hence, he made his choice. His heart was already hardened. The Lord just Followed it along. Like it says in scripture. You don't want the truth. God will give you what you want. You don't want the truth. He will send you strong delusion. Like he has done to you Christy. Because you don't want the truth. See. God would be. Absolutely. 
unjust and unfair if he, like Calvinism teaches, elect and non-elect. That's ludicrous, okay? That's ludicrous. That would make man a robot. God doesn't want a robot, okay? Again, check out the Calvinism video where we debunk Calvinism, okay? All right? Pharaoh already had a hardened heart. The Lord just went along and gave him what he wanted, okay? Simple, simple, okay? So a lot of people would disagree with me, but it does say that God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy. And if he decides he doesn't want to have mercy on you, he's not going to have mercy on you. But Jesus says, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. If you are... Again, you, you dunderhead, you stupid head. Okay, that's being, that, again, that is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. Okay? In context, he is saying that to people. Why? Why is he saying that? Simply because he is going to be on the earth. Okay? So, someone is, during the kingdom of heaven, they're going to have to go and give an account of themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh. Okay? That's why he says that. It's not a contradiction. Okay? Not at all. Okay? He's saying for his people during the kingdom of heaven to be merciful. Why? Because he is the one who is going to be judged during that time. Okay? This, this, this is simple, Christy. This is simple. This is very simple stuff. Okay? Merciful toward others, God will show you mercy. If you forgive others, God will forgive you. Jesus says that multiple times. So Jesus is saying... And about that, okay... To forgive, to be forgiven, okay? Um, those are works. Forgive, to be forgiven. I'm writing that down for a link, okay? Forgive, to be forgiven, okay? If you don't forgive, your fa Heavenly Father will not forgive you also, right? That's what you're talking about? That's for the kingdom of heaven, okay? That's a work. Today... You don't have to forgive someone in order to be forgiven. Now, if you go on in unforgiveness, your testimony, your walk, your life will be messed up, but your eternal security, your salvation, will not be affected because it's not your salvation. Christy, you know nothing of what you're speaking about. You need to shut up. That all you have to do in order to receive mercy is to be merciful to other people. Now, this does contradict other things that Jesus says. To me, it even contradicts John 3 you. 16, where it says, Whoever believes in God will be saved. You have to believe. It. The belief is such an important part of it. Yes. But here, Jesus is saying, If you show mercy, God is going to show you mercy. Do unto others, and God will do to you. But Paul During the not dispensation that. Paul of the does kingdom not reiterate of heaven. that point. He doesn't say, be merciful to others and God will be merciful to you. He says, God is going to have mercy on you if he wants to. Now, in Matthew 5, 17 through 20, Jesus talks about not coming to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. He says, for truly I tell, to you, tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any... Oh, that's a shut up! Not even using the scriptures. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Verses 17 on to verse 20. Okay? Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 on to verse 20. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to for fulfill. He did that with what? The death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> Again, about the teaching thing. That was really bad, Christy. Okay? <laughs> okay, that was... But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Your, your very first thing about teaching, Christy, is, is so stupid. 
<laughs> okay? Anyway. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven, the actual physical, literal kingdom with Jesus Christ ruling on the throne. See, Christ fulfilled the law with the death burial and resurrection and the blood shed on the cross. He fulfilled the law. That's why you don't keep the law today to be saved. Stay saved. Okay? Isaiah chapter 53. Okay? Isaiah chapter 53. And see, this is the result of Christianity, people. Christians are not being taught the truth. They're not being taught to rightly divide the word of truth. And because they are not being taught to div rightly divide the word of truth, this is what happens. But, okay, Isaiah 53, verses 4 on to verse 9. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. He fulfilled the law. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked. And with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence. Neither was there. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Okay. He fulfilled the law. And also. Also in Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, just one verse. Just one verse, verse 20. Okay? Likewise, also the cup after... Okay, let's read verses 19 on to verse 20. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me, Catholic. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying... This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Okay? The death, burial, and resurrection. The blood shed on the cross. Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. God shall provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Okay? He fulfilled the law with his death, burial, and resurrection. It is finished. Okay? Galatians. Or excuse me. Romans chapter 3. Saints, you don't have to be afraid of using Romans chapter 3 in the appropriate context because all these devils take it out of context. Romans chapter 3, verses 19 on verse 28. Now, we know that what's, what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law... <laughs> there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, okay, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is, it is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay. But by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Then she makes a reference to James chapter 2, which will be in, 
will be in this. There are going to be a lot of resources for you to consider, okay? Okay? Jesus fill, fulfilled the law. You don't have to keep the law to be saved today. That's how he fulfilled it. He did not do away with it. And Galatians 3, Galatians 3, okay, this is nuts and bolts kind of stuff, which Christianity doesn't teach. Galatians chapter 3, verses 21 on to verse 25. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily, righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. And this is by rightly dividing the word of truth, Christy. <laughs> uh. He needs to disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who set aside one of the least of these commands and teaching teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever practices and teaches these commands will be kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. Another For dispensation. That unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. And I feel as though Jesus spends so much of his she time feels. saying, "Be kind." Do the good works. Do good things for other people. Love others. Care for others. Be merciful. Be compassionate. Be humble. Be all of the good qualities. Do those things. You will be righteous and you will be called into the kingdom of God. But Paul says in Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Now, of course, Paul makes other statements about works versus Even my enemies are, are looking at you, at you, Christy. It's like, wow, that you, you're, yeah. Ephesians chapter two, number one. Ephesians chapter two is written on the saved people, but verses four and verse thirteen. But God, who is in who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us, made alive hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace are ye saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, works of the law, lest any man should boast, very compromising position we caught you there, Christy. For we are his workmanship, a new creature, created in Christ Jesus onto good works. Kindness, compassion, being an example, being a minister of reconciliation, ambassadors for Christ, okay? Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them, walk as new creatures. Because in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 2, okay, uh, it, Paul tells us, okay, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay? Alright? There's no contradiction here whatsoever. You are just stupid, Christy. Is faith and you know faith without works is dead and I again he can't faith without works is dead uh, James said that not Paul you idiot for another dispensation okay and the link for that will be in the description box as well okay 
contradicts himself, but he specifically says, it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And I think this theme just occurs over and over and over again throughout Paul's writings. It's all about the resurrection. You hear a lot of her, I think, I, 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 again, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, yeah. Of Jesus, having faith in Jesus. Open. But hey, Christy, at least you're not saying you're a saved person. I would really be going after, at you hard. This ain't nothing. Being <laughs> Jesus. It's all about the belief in who Jesus is and what he did, and that is what saves you. That is your saving grace. Whereas Jesus spent so much of his ministry not saying, believe in me. He said it very, very few times. He said, he said, do the will of my father, which is what I'm telling you, these rules. He, was, he is the father. Be loving, show compassion to others. Do the works. That is how you are saved. Because there was another dispensation. He was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews, which is all works. It's rightly dividing the word of truth, you moron. Paul says, have faith. That's how you are saved. Now in Mark 10, 6 through 9, Jesus says, but at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, <laughs> you're going to like this one. What God has joined together, let no one separate. Says, at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And for this reason, a man will leave his father and be united to his wife. So Jesus is insisting that there is this kind of sacred, divine expectation that, that people will get married and they will become one flesh and they will honor God through that. Because that is the reason the two genders were created, according to Jesus. <laughs> That's what Jesus is saying. In 1 Corinthians 7, verse 7 through 8, Paul says, I wish that all of you were as I am, which is celibate, <laughs> because Paul couldn't get any. But each of you has your own gift from God. One has this gift, another has that. Now to the unmarried and to the widows, I say it is good for them to stay unmarried as I do. So Paul is insisting that people should be celibate. They should not. <laughs> okay, okay. Like, like I said, if I were to tell you about this, just tell you, you would be like, dude, are you crazy? Okay, well, hold on. Let's let's have a little, what's her name here? Married. He is not perpetuating this idea that there is this kind of sacred expectation from God that you are supposed to come together as one and be married. I do think it's so interesting that, that Paul has uh, decided to stay unmarried and... Uh, he thinks that that is just the path that everyone should take since he has too. <laughs> you know, if I can't do it, you can either. <laughs> Our next contradiction. Okay, shut up. Let's, okay, that, that's just absolute stupidity. Mark chapter 10. Okay, Mark chapter 10. All right. You, 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 you guys heard that. You guys heard that. Uh, when I first heard that, <laughs> it's like, my wife's like, what's so funny? It's like, she doesn't really, yeah, okay. Mark chapter 10, verses 2 and verse 12. Pharisees came to him and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife, tempting him? And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. And Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of the creation God made them male and female. Yes, two genders, that's it. Okay? For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife, and they tw twain, that's two, shall be one flesh, so then they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not, my, let not man put asunder. And in the house his disciples asked him again of the same matter. And he saith unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committeth adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she committed adultery. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 19, okay? Verses 10 on to verse 12. <laughs> his disciples say unto him, If the case of the man be with his wife, it is not good to marry. Christy, 
I, you're not watching this. But if you are, any of you who are deceived by this idiot. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive the same, save they to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs, celibates, you can say, who were born, who were so born from their mother's womb. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. And there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Okay? It wasn't a thing of force. There were some people who just aren't going to get married. And as far as Paul is concerned, okay, as far as Paul is concerned, uh, 1 Corinthians 7, verses 1 on to verse 9. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and every woman have her own husband. We could stop right there. Paul's like, look, it's good that you remain like I am. But in order to avoid you fornicating, when you have burning and lusting, have your own husband, have your own wife. He was not against marriage. He knew that there would be troubles in marriage, but Paul was not against marriage, okay? Nor did Jesus force it, okay? Christy, you, you are just stupid, okay? Let's continue. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. Likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power of her own body but the husband. And likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body but the wife. Okay, why? Because we're one flesh. My wife sitting out there in the living room, that's my, that's my body. Me sitting here in Brother Alexander's room, this is her body. We're one flesh. That's how that works. Okay? Defraud ye not one another except to be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency, uh, inability to control your lust. Okay? But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. For I would that all men were even as I myself. But every man hath his proper gift of God, which we already addressed in Matthew 19, which this idiot didn't, okay? One after this manner and another after that. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them to abide even as I. But! If they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. And while we're at it, verses 32 on verse 38. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong unto the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit. Not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Okay? But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age and need so require, let him do what he will. He sinneth not. Let him, let them marry. Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but hath power over his own will, and hath so decreed in his heart, that he will keep his virgin, doeth well. So then, he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. 
Christy, it's like the thing with the teacher thing. Christy, you're stupid. You are absolutely stupid. There's no nice way to put it, okay? That, that, that is just on another level of stupidity. But now, 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 now we, now we get to, uh, now let's, um, let's get to the, let's get to it. Here it is. Because Matthew 544, Jesus says, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And this goes on. I don't want you to retaliate. I don't want you to be angry and bitter toward people who don't agree with you or aren't of you or, you know, your enemies, even if they are your enemies, don't, don't hate them. That is because, okay, now Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, okay, Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 and verse 48, kingdom of heaven doctrine, where the king is on the earth, and people are going to have to give an account to the judge, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, that's why I say, don't hate them. Because they're going to have to deal with me. They got bigger fish to fry. Okay, you show love to people by telling them the truth today. Okay, but Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 and verse 48. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. And persecute you. That ye may be the children of your father. Okay? That ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? Squid love their own. And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publican so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now see, again, this is being said in context of having a king on the earth. So loving your enemy in this context, in the kingdom of heaven, uh, they're going to have someone else to deal with more so than they. Verses 21 on to verse 26. In Matthew 5, ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause, hey Christy, that without a cause isn't in your Bible, I can guarantee you, uh, shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Reka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Ah, uh, Brad, you called this girl a fool and an idiot and stupid. Yes. See, context. The king is on the earth. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. The kingdom of heaven, you're going to see Jesus Christ on the throne. How in the wide world of sports enter uh, entertainment, why, how in the wide world of sports entertainment are you going to possibly say there is no God when you're going to see him? Okay? This is in context for the kingdom of heaven. Okay? The, the wrath, the judgment of us is falling in comparison to when they are going to have to stand before the Lord. Okay? That's what this is talking about, you idiot. All right? Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath, hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift, before the altar, altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come offer, come and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge. Who's going to be that judge in the kingdom of heaven? The Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Okay? Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt not by thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the utmost farthing. So see, they're in the kingdom of heaven, Christy, people. Uh, they are going to have to give an account to the Lord Himself 
for an infraction. So when uh, and during the kingdom of heaven, you got a problem with someone or someone got a problem with you, uh, you make it up because he's going to go to Jesus. It's like, Jesus, this guy did this. And, okay, that's what that's talking about. Okay? You show love today, nitwit, by telling the truth to your enemy. Okay, but also to back this up about, you know, what we're talking about with uh, taking them to the judge. The judge is Jesus Christ, who you deny. Okay, Psalm 2, Psalm 2, Psalm 2, verse 7 on verse 12. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the utmost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all, are all they that put their trust in him. Okay? Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. Okay? Verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called capital W, Wonderful, capital C, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Jesus Christ is the Father. Yes. The Prince of Peace. Of the increase of in, of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So during the kingdom of heaven, if an infraction is made, they're gonna have to stand before God. Man's judgment falls. Weak in comparison, Christy. Okay? <clears throat> Turn the other cheek. Pray for that. But Paul comes along, and in Galatians 1, 8 through 9, he says, But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, Another dispensation. let us be under God's curse as we have already said so now i say right, again, dividing anybody the word of truth you a gospel other than what you accepted let them be under god's curse he basically just he just repeats it like this is so important to him that if somebody else is preaching something different than paul is because paul has the right gospel and everybody else yes paul spake the true gospel of the true god our father jesus christ and yes there are many deceivers out there yes there are yes there are and let them be accursed. Why? Because they're bringing people to hell like you are. Has the wrong gospel, which is a very convenient thing to tell people when you want to make sure that they don't listen to anyone else and they just do whatever you say. Paul says if, if anybody else preaching a different gospel, God will curse them. I want them to be cursed by God. I am invoking God's curse upon them. No, he never said that. He said let them be accursed. He never, I am cursing them. Let them be accursed. Okay? I would argue that invoking curses... Yeah, you sure would argue, wouldn't you, you stupid little girl? ...upon people that are just simply teaching a different gospel than you. They're not even your enemy, but they're just... Oh, no! You're teaching another Jesus, another gospel? You are my enemy. Okay, Christy? And you don't you don't understand that. In the, uh, in the description box about uh, love your enemy and perfect hatred, uh, there, again... Uh, for you to consider. Any of you who are deceived by this idiot? They're sharing a different message than you is is quite a stretch from love and pray for your enemies. Yeah, I, I would idea. say that praying for and cursing are probably like, I think they're like polar opposites, you know? <laughs> I don't think that you can curse someone and pray for them and love them at the same time. Paul comes on scene right after Jesus and instead of loving his enemies, he just curses all of them. Now, the last one I want to present is not as clear of a contrast now here here it is here it is now christy now i'm really going to rub you raw now i'm really going to rub you raw christy okay 
I'm really going to rub you raw here because this is the problem that Christy has with God. And this is what every feminazi out there has with God. Prediction. But I do think that the attitude and the teaching of Paul in this specific scenario is so different than the attitude of Jesus. And that is how Paul treats women and what he thinks. Ah, yes. 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 She's a feminist. She's a feminazi. And I can't tell you how many times that is her problem with how Paul treats women. Now she's going to of women. In Jesus' ministry, he, he interacted with many women. Yes, he did. And in the book of John, after the resurrection, or at the, the resurrection, uh, Jesus, in verse 17, says to Mary Magdalene, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet... Now, see, what she's going to do here is... Let me tell you what you're going to do here, uh, Christy. You're going to say that the Lord is the one who chose women to go and preach his gospel. Okay? Uh, that is not true. You do not see Jesus sending any woman out to preach of him. The woman at the well, she's like, hey, come see this guy who told me everything I did. Okay? Okay? It's like, come here. All right? Yes. Mary Magdalene, she went and told the disciples. Uh, Mary's like, whatever he does, tells you to do, you do it. You do not see Jesus sending forth a woman. You do not. These are different circumstances. Okay, what she is talking about, let's go there, John chapter 20. Let's get a little context. See what she is doing right now with this argument that she is doing. I've run into this quite a few times, Christy. She is going to put forth that woman is woman, man, child, pet. Okay, God, woman, child, pet, man. That is what she is Attempting to establish that, see, Jesus chose the woman. Hmm. Okay? John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Verses 15 on to verse 18. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposing him to be a gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast slain him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master, with a capital M. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended unto my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things Onto her in the in the gospel accounts before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? There are many people who like to say that well Mary Magdalene was a preacher. You don't have any scriptural evidence of this. She was not preaching. She was just giving a message. Just like the woman at the well. She was not preaching. She was giving a message. Hey, come see this dude. She was not doing any preaching or teaching. Okay? Mary at the supper. It's like whatever he says to do, you do it. Okay, you do not see Jesus Christ ordaining a woman under his ministry while he was offering the kingdom of heaven. You do not see a woman being ordained of the Lord to go and preach of him. You do not. These are different circumstances. See, what she's doing is trying to establish the feminazi order. God, woman, child, pet, man. Very subtle, very wicked, you devil, Christy. You vile, devil, idiot, stupid, wicked devil. Does that say that enough? Okay? That is what she is doing. That is what she is doing there, people. Be aware of that. And now here, Christy. Let me, let me get you. Let me get you aggravated, Christy. Let me get you aggravated. And every single one of you, uh, yeah, one of you, uh, Feminazis out there. Let me get you real aggravated. Okay? Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 25. This gets them every time. Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 on verse 25. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. 
I will make him a help meet for him. And your Bible, Christie, messes this all up. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a help meet for him. And this in no way implies bestiality. If you, Christy, happen to watch it up to this point, it's like, oh, well, Adam was in bestiality there. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. There's no even a shred of that mentioned there. The Lord rebuke you, okay? And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, yeah, this, this is what you hate, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. What does the word woman mean? Because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. You see, Christy, woman was made for man, not man for the woman. But, but, now see, now see, uh, an idiot like this is like, well, that means woman is a lesser creature. No, 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 no. Okay, you bear children. Okay, you guide, You are to guide the house. You are to be a keeper at home. The way Satan has destroyed everything is by making you, woman, uh, putting, being in a video with your husband, okay, and justifying uh, a woman preaching. Mr. I'm not going to say the name because I think he is a saint. Okay, I'm not going to. You, brother, you'll make it through this. You know because you sent me that video. Okay? I do think that man's a saint. But I know where he gets that from. Just to find. See, when you take a woman and put her on a YouTube video with you and she starts speaking, you are putting her behind a pulpit in a public setting. A woman can be out there, uh, preach on the men, yes, in that context. Uh, it's My wife has done it herself, okay? But then when I come along, you know, she was over there looking at one thing. I was getting paper towels, talking to a couple men. I come in, and she's like, oh, here's my husband. He'll tell you more, okay? Yes, a woman can do that. But see, when you put a woman with you, your lovely helpmeet, okay? When you put your helpmeet on camera with you, and she starts teaching with you sitting there. You are putting your wife in a public thing like YouTube, teaching others. That's wrong, pal. That's wrong. Okay? That's wrong. That's contrary to Scripture. I know where you got that, and so does everybody else. But that's a, a little rabbit trail. Okay? That's a little rabbit trail. But... Woman means of man. Okay? Woman means of man. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Women can give birth. Women are to, supposed to be keepers at home. To guide the house. The Lord, you know, look at Ruth. Okay? Look at Ruth. Look at Esther. Okay? Mary Magdalene, the women that followed Jesus, who ministered unto him. You read in uh, Romans 16, some of the first ones that Paul thanks are women who washed the saints' feet. Okay? That is noble. That is glorious in the sight of God. Satan comes around and says, Yea, hath God said. And now you got an idiot like this. 1 Corinthians Chapter 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses uh, 33 on verse 37. For God is not the author of confusion, <laughs> but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. 
Let your women keep silence in the churches. Now that doesn't mean you can't talk. But you're so like you're supposed no, silence. You're not supposed to to teach. Okay? You're not. Okay? And do, do. When you put your wife on a YouTube video with you, and she starts teaching, and she's not a teacher. Yes, she is! Yes, she is! Okay, you can try to sugarcoat it all you want. You are being contrary to the scripture. Okay? You are! You are, Jack! Period! Okay? If she's going to sit there and not say anything or whatever, fine! If you want her there for moral support, fine! But the minute she starts reading the scripture and teaching, while she's teaching other women, look at the demographics of who watches YouTube. Normally, it's mostly male. Okay? And hence, you don't know who's watching. To have a woman teaching the things of God is against scripture, especially on a public setting like this. That doesn't mean that she can witness onto someone or teach them about God, give them the gospel. No, that because we're all in the ministry of reconciliation. But when you get into a public forum such as YouTube and you put your lovely help meet there with you and she, you, you're you doing contrary to scripture. Period. Period. And you're wrong. But, let's continue. Okay? Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law before Jesus. Okay? And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for a woman to speak in church. And church, what is that? The body, not a building. Okay? That's uh, the body, not the building. What? Came the word of God out from you, or came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things which I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord, genius. Oh, and also about Jesus, um, we see in Matthew chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12, okay? Matthew chapter 12, God is not against women. I'm not against women. Okay? We're all in the ministry of reconciliation. Dude, when you make your little videos, pretty good. I'll give you that. But when you make your videos, and I'm not talking about that, His Holiness either. But when you make your videos and you have your lovely help meet there and she starts reading scripture and teaching, well, she's te you're, you're doing contrary to the scripture because you're in a public thing. You are basically putting your wife in a pulpit with yourself. Period. Dude, period. Okay? But, Matthew 12, Matthew 12, verses 46 on to verse 50. We're almost done. We're almost done. While he had talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Jesus never said no to his mother. Catholics tell you that. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. Now, this is a different dispensation before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is, is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Okay? Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 on verse 28. Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 on to verse 28. Then Jesus went forth and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. She's a Gentile calling him the son of David, which she had no right to do. Okay? But he answered her, not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. 
But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meek to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Dogs referring on to Gentiles, of course, but he was saying it to a woman there, Christy. But now, see, instead of being in indignant, it's like, I'll fix you. I'm going to know. And she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And our Lord's like, Then Jesus answered and said unto her, A woman? O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. See, Christy, if you were in that place and he said that to you, you would have a little hissy fit and go like, hmm, and walk away and then make 50,000 videos against our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But see, this woman, even though the Lord said that, said, and she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. There's a big difference. Oh, and also there's another one. John 2. John 2, which I already made a reference to. John 2. John 2. Uh, verse 4. <laughs> Jesus said, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's... Let's read verses 1 on to verse 5. Okay? And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Look at how Jesus responds. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour has not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, Okay? Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the Creator, God the Father. Okay? He created woman from man. And, okay, now let's let this little twit talk a little bit. I ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and to your God. And Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that she had... Now watch the agenda her. here. So, when Jesus allegedly resurrects, he... He did resurrect you, idiot. woman to go and tell people what happened to tell... See, see, he entrusted a woman. So see, what's the hidden agenda? God, woman, child, pet, man. The feminist agenda. See? God chose a woman. No, no. Tell men what happened. Jesus is not putting men and women on these, these different levels. Jesus is kind of seeing everybody as equal. And in fact, I feel like he... I feel, there you go again. Um, no, he created man and woman. Okay, woman is the weaker vessel. Peter talks about that. We're not going to go to that. But women are weaker vessels. Doesn't matter if they can get steroids and put a, a guillotine choke on you, they are still the weaker vessel. And they were made that way for a glorious purpose to be a help meet unto man. And dear Christy, that's your problem because you don't want no man being over you. That's your problem with God. You wretched woman. Elevates women a lot throughout the writings. I'm not Jesus's biggest fan, but I can recognize that he was good to women. He didn't see women as weak or incapable, and he appeared to a woman and told that woman to go and tell tell people what happened. Tell the agenda that he's oh, yeah. that is a very big stretch from First Timothy two twelve, where he says, "I do not permit a woman to teach or assume authority over a man. She must be quiet." Not long ago, what, Rita what, Levy Montalcini celebrated her 103rd birthday, yeah. and then during the festival, shut up, dude. It's bad enough I got to listen to Where this. Where in any 
of Jesus' teachings did he indicate that women specifically were not allowed to teach, have authority over a man, and that they were to remain quiet? He didn't. He didn't share that message. And you'd think that if Paul was just continuing the message of Jesus, that Jesus would have said something like this, but he didn't. He showed no indication of seeing women as the weaker vessel. He showed no indication. Yes, he did. We've looked at it. Yes, he did. He is the creator. He is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. He is the father. He is the one who created woman. Yes, he did. Okay? First Timothy chapter 2. We're almost done. First Timothy chapter 2, verses 9 on to verse 15. Okay? In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. See, there are purposes for a woman and for man. You were created to be a helpmeet unto the man. You can bear children, okay? You can bear children. Satan went to you. You are the weaker vessel. There is nothing wrong with that, Christy. But you hate that. Because you are your own God. You are your father, the devil. Of, 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 you know, not wanting women to speak up. You know, he, he didn't tell women to be quiet. He told Mary Magdalene, go out and tell people. Talk. No, he told them, told her to go tell my brethren that they, that she had seen me. See what she's doing? You see, people? The feminazi agenda with this evil devil idiot. You see? Jesus did not say that. He's like, well, tell my brother what you see. He's not saying, he didn't say to Mary or any woman, go to everybody and preach to me. He did not say that. Not at all. Not at all. You wicked little devil. You wicked filth. Okay? That's getting a little on the ruthless side. You're not, you're not saved and you don't purport to be. Okay, so. Speak. But Paul comes along and he's like, we need to make sure that women stay quiet and, and women cannot be teaching over men, which... Because look what you're doing, you idiot! Yeah. Assumes that men can be teaching men, men can be teachers, even though, like we saw before, Jesus says don't call people a teacher. <laughs> shut up! Just shut up with that. that, that that's so stupid. Just shut up. Up. Uh. You are not a teacher. You must be a humble servant. He wanted people to be servants. He washed feet for his sake. I was going to say Christ's sakes, but, you know, anyway. <laughs> what a far leap from any of the teachings that we read about from Jesus in the Gospels. Now, is it possible that there are teachings that didn't make the Gospels that were being, you know, passed on? as No. As oral tradition, and Paul heard those, and that's what he... Oral tradition? Ooh, Catholic? Keeps going off of maybe, and Jesus didn't make sure to specify. Hey, make sure make sure you treat women as kind of second class. That's really important to me. So Paul is adding to the words of Jesus. He's making up his own rules, and to me, no, he is not. Feel so no, he is not. Jesus Jesus appeared to Paul and ordained him, and the Lord in Paul wrote these things. This is from the Lord. Very uncompromising. Uh, uh, position we have you can totally see those dead eyes of yours contradictory to the overall theming the overall message of jesus according to the gospels to me and remember he was preaching the death he was he was preaching the kingdom of heaven offering the kingdom of heaven onto the jews 
while under the law, and he had yet to die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures, when he was on the earth the first time, after he died, buried, and rose again, third day according to the scriptures, that brought in the New Testament, this dispensation, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. I'm getting really sick of looking at this girl's face. Reading the words of Jesus and then reading the words of Paul, the two, I feel like they butt heads. (laughs) Because you got to rightly divide the word of truth! Yeah! Who's going to win, Jesus or or Paul? Uh, Well, I know who won out in the modern church, and that's Paul. Paul won out because the churches love to quote Paul more than they love to quote Jesus. They, They love using the rules and the regulations and all the things that Paul told them to do and Paul told them to be. They like focusing on that way because that is a doctrine specific for us today even though churches uh christians don't teach rightly dividing the word of truth more than they like the idea of just being humble servants and loving people so i definitely want to do a deeper dive on paul if you are interested in that and interested uh yeah if you're interested in paul uh i know this book that my father wrote called the authorized version they're called the Pauline Epistles. You want to know about Paul? You want to learn about Paul? Uh, Acts on to uh, Philemon. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. That, that, that's enough. We, we've heard enough from this. But I do want to touch one more thing about this feminazi thing. I don't want to look at this ugly girl anymore. I do not. That's enough. That's enough. Okay. That's enough. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. We're almost done. We're almost done. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on verse 7. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, to the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. The woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. You look across the page in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. God never said anything about not touching it. Okay, Eve, because she was a little intimidated, uh, I think, because of Satan being there, uh, added to the word of God. Hmm. Okay? And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. The lie that is being promulgated today. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree des- to, to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Because sin was entered into the world. In the Garden of Eden, it was not by grace through faith. Oh, no, it was all works. God said, don't eat that. They ate it. Here we are today. Okay? Satan, like, yeah, God said. Question what God said. Hey, you disobey, your eyes will be open and ye shall be as gods. No one good and evil. And because of this, verses 16 and verse 19. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Uh, You sisters out there who've had children, uh, childbearing was easier before the fall. Okay? Yes, in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. But yet you have women nowadays, because of Satan, they don't want a man to rule over them. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed be the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So, 
this dear no this Christy Burke is stupid and she is a wicked little idiot devil uh, with a feminist agenda she is to be avoided like the plague she doesn't know what she's talking about so that is going to be it for this video there will be many links for you in the description box if you have questions about anything check the links okay check the links and Christy if you happen you will I think you'll see this because you're vain enough to watch something that someone says about you but uh, if you make it this far good luck girl because you're going to need it at the Great White Throne of Judgment so that is going to be it for this video Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Thank you to the brethren out there who will love us and pray for us and help us. Thank you. And we'll see you in the next video.